exodus of extraordinary migration is crushing through North Africa. And there is only one major entrance to Europe, and that is through Libya. Some arrive by choice, others by force, and many others for economic reasons. But Libya, Libya is the purgatory where most migrants prepare to face the deadless stretch of the Mediterranean Sea. The high death rate of irregular migrants of African origins on the way to seek greener pastures in Europe is becoming too alarming to be ignored. The risky circumstances surrounding the journey are often not considered very well before embarking on it by these desperate migrants. It amazes rational thinking the astonishing amount of money and resource expended on the journey, regardless of its consequences. But why are people so determined to go on this risky journey? Come along with me in this documentary titled, Why We Returned Home. But why are people so determined to go on this risky journey? Well, there are many diverse influencing factors attributable to it, and everything is anchored on socio-economic situations of the country. Unemployment. I decided to go into hawking because I've tried all available means. I even I spent my hard-earned money. That's for me to in an employment, to be employed, but to no avail. So instead of me to go into robbery or other antisocial activities, I decided to go into hawking for me to earn a living. Be that as it may, ostentatious lifestyles of African leaders and undocumented sources of wealth of certain individuals often put pressure on the rest of the society to live a better life. This, however, has led many people to live in an unhealthy materialistic and competitive environment, that further cause widespread corruption everywhere in the country. This ostentatious lifestyle has gone beyond the shores of Nigeria to Europe. I've got one client who literally has diamonds on the soles of his shoes. When he walks, you can see the soles glistening. Then wealthy Nigerians are spending millions of pounds on London properties. Corruption itself has reached a pinnacle and became a daunting burden on the nation that the government is battling to disentangle the country from. In an attempt to live a better life like them, many people are leaving the country in droves, in search of greener pasture in a strange destination, just to escape the temporary challenges facing them. I met one who shared his experience. Nigeria, we compare ourselves with virtually everybody we see. We often make the rich the yardstick to measure the standard of living and as a social parameter of where we should be. The journey to Libya started very early in the morning from Kano State in Nigeria to Agadez in Niger Republic. Everyone pays about 12,000 Naira to the driver which to my estimation is about $30 at that time. The driver is from Niger. He took off and the road is so bad that it takes about three days to get to Agadez. The Agadez lays at the edge of the desert. The military stops many times. To so each time, you have to pay up. If they see Nigerians and Organians in the bus, they will shout, stop out hey if you don't pay they will throw you out of the car and you waste a lot of money on that stretch alone every time they stop you you pay five dollars this is on top of the thirty dollars which you already paid to hire the car so after three days and much money you get to Agadez after Agadez it is all desert there is no more road there is a trail 
which the driver must know, but they miss it sometimes. Sometimes, when there is a desert storm, they do miss it, and it means you might end up dying in the desert. Moving through the Saharan desert is an unforgivable transgression one can commit against himself without adequate upkeep. Migrants don't have enough water and foods for this journey. Potential lawyers, bankers, technicians are crossing through the deserts, navigating from one country's border to another with uncertainty and security situation awaiting them at the next community their journey takes them to. In the desert, those who can afford the exorbitant transport price pay up and continue, whereas those who cannot will have to trek miles of sand dunes in scorching and extremely high temperatures. Some people went back from Hagadahs at a point because they couldn't continue. At the end, some people didn't make it. People were dropping dead for lack of water, food and over dehydration. On reaching the town called Daku, we were stranded there. From Daku, we took another car to Libya. After a number of days, the car, became, the car came back and with only few people left. Only few of us came back. Most had died from thirst because of heavy border guards who were patrolling at the border of Libya and there was no way through. The determination to reach the promised land was too strong not to continue and we marched on. There are many glory tales of the event that happened in Libya. Libyans are selling migrants as slaves to farmers and ladies are captured as sex slaves. After six months in Libya, I boarded a fish ferry and headed to Sicily. In another scenario, prospective doctors, engineers, artisans and other young graduates are crossing over the Mediterranean Sea on a tiny overcrowded boat in order to reach the shores of any European country, with a tendance of severe and extremely hot atmosphere of several miles around them. Many of them have never gone on such misadventure before. They have invested so much money that could have taken them out of poverty forever in their home country on such journey. Then the actual horror began. We had only still bread, a few short biscuits on board, and added to it was the agonizing heat. People were dropping dead, and the captain did not did not give a damn. To stay alive, people started eating the flesh of, de of the dead. It was like something from a scary movie right in front of my eyes. For five days, it felt like years. This leg of the journey, unfortunately, had led to wreckages of many immigrants' boats and unquantifiable loss of lives and properties at the sea. And some often ended up as a prey in the hands of sea pirates and desert bandits. The multitude, multitude, one mission, one mission and same roots, one, one destination. destination. At the place of their final destination, and to their disappointment, that's when the reality normally set in and they found out that their dreams of a better life, good jobs and a lot of money are turning to a nightmare. 
for many over there, the greener pasture they sought after have somehow turned to desert overnight. With all the big investment on the journey they ended up in destitution, sleeping under the bridges, uncompleted houses or by the roadside, in an unfriendly weather. And only to be registered as illegal immigrants at the country of their destinations. This is what illegal immigrants called home. I worked for a security company, so they didn't pay me much. I paid over 1 million naira, about $8,000, 5 years ago to get this job. If I had worked this hard here in Nigeria, I would have made more money. This is what I tell people here in Nigeria, that still hold on to the dream of migrating at all costs. I wasn't feeling good, and then one day, my best friend over there, about 30 years old, came back so tired from a duty and went to bed. But he never woke up, never woke up. After that, I wanted to leave. I couldn't stay there any longer. That's because we were even lucky to get the job. Many were in that lucky. When they couldn't find any job, they become stranded and they're trapped in poverty worse than where they were coming from. Most countries of destinations, especially European countries, are also battling with economic downturns, strategizing ways to create more job opportunities for their increasingly large number of unemployed citizens. Even the menial jobs that used to be safe haven for the destitute are fast disappearing. And what does that lead to? Frustration. Anger. Lost of values and morality. An angry man then becomes an aggressive and violent one. How will such a person survive without any means of livelihood? Some find solace in robbery, some in cocaine trafficking, some in arms begging and those who did not run mad from taking drug remain nuisance to the community and many ladies often embrace prostitution. They said they are going to give me a job, I'm going to go to school. That there was no job? No job. And no school? No school. What did they expect you to do? Um, a prostitution. And did you have to do it? Uh, I do. Have, I have to do it because I have to pay the person. I was like a prisoner. It is a bit scary at night. You are constantly afraid of being arrested for lack of papers, or beaten, or robbed by fellow migrants who have taken to organizing. Meanwhile, criminality has zero tolerance in most of these countries. They get arrested, easily, thrown into the prison, killed or deported, depending on the gravity of their crimes. No criminal ever thought he would be arrested one day. Each and every one of them think they will outsmart the justice system of the land but the hands of the law always grab and crushes the spirit of crime in them. I returned home because there is no place like home. No fewer than 15,316 Nigerians are in various prisons abroad. Mr. Abdulazi Kandankano, the Director, Consular and Immigration Services, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has said, Please value your life and do not embark on such irregular migration. Every country is tightening the doors against irregular migration with every punishment and eventual deportation. Believe in yourself. Believe you can make it here in Nigeria. You have what it takes to make it. You are groomed to be sound, professional in your area of discipline and as a valuable asset to this country. Let your community celebrate you and your hard work. And let them see you as one of the heroes of your generation. <laughs>